Damien. And then I'm going to do a quick little introduction for Damien. Um, before that, I'm going to say if you hear a child squawking in the background, this is COVID times, you know, so hopefully you're used to it, but that's my kid um, being put to bed and probably wanting dad to read to him, so which can't happen tonight. So um, I'm going to introduce Damien um, da Dawaher. And um, he, he graduated from PNCA um, and he is working in the, actively working in the graphic design industry um, in advertising. Um, and we basically headhunted him. So I appreciate him, him coming and working with us. And he has a spectacular In-N-Out Burger shirt on right now. And we were just discussing that there's one in Kaiser now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand it over to him. Awesome, thanks for the intro, Seth. I'm um, excited to meet all of you. Hey, um, I'm going to share my screen here and just have a brief little intro for you guys. Let's see. Welcome, Anibal. We're just getting started. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm so sorry for the delay. No worries. Anibal, just so you know, we're recording this, OK? Oh, yeah, it's fine. OK, thanks. Cool. Can you all see my slide? Yep. Cool. Yeah, it looks okay. great. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, I'm a designer. Um, my name is Damien uh, Dalwahir. Um, I graduated from PNCA. So that's really cool, Megan, that you're, you're going there now. Um, it was a great experience. Um, I studied communication design there. Um, it changed to graphic design halfway through, but essentially it was just the same. Same thing under a different name. Um, I think at PNCA, they, they teach uh, graphic design in a really conceptual sort of way. Um, so it was really interesting to kind of balance art and design together. And I've kind of been doing that my entire um, uh, professional career. Uh, so I do a little bit of both. I like to paint on walls and make really big pieces, but I also work on really small pieces like branding, um, wine bottles, uh, creating logos, uh, so it's, it's all over the place right now. I'm doing a lot of marketing design. Um, that's just kind of where I ended up. Um, so it's a lot of quick, quick pace turnarounds using Photoshop um, every day, Illustrator every day and other programs. But um, Photoshop is one in particular that I really like to use a lot um, within work and also um, doing some side work, which um, it's a really powerful tool. Um, you can see here, like I can, you can really push it to its limits and turn a photo into something crazy colorful and fun. Um, but then you can also do simple things like photo edit and, um, and I'll show you kind of the basics to get you started on that journey. And I'm just gonna exit out of that. And switch to... Hola, Lorena. Um, Estamos, we're, we're just so you know, we're recording this to play back on the channels and social media and stuff, okay? Gusto verte. All right. So um, I guess actually before I kind of get started, how many of you all have, have experience in Photoshop? A little bit. Tiny, okay, cool. Tiny bit. So yeah, you, you messed around, been inside the program. Um, I'm going to start just from the from the basics of like understanding the workspace because it's like I said, it's a pretty powerful tool um, and it can get um, a little overwhelming, like getting lost inside of all the things it can do. So we're just going to basically show you how to to navigate the workspace. Um, so you're a little bit more confident when you go into it on your own. So when you open up a project um, and I don't know how do all of you have the the, the project open? You just want to follow me along. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, we could just, I could just show you kind of through my screen too. Um, Damien, can we get a quick gauge of, of people that might have, have it with them? And I'm also going to ask the, the um, Derek, Derek, somebody yes. just joined. I want to make sure who that is and um, make sure I get you that you attended the class. All right. I'm trying to see who that is. 
Yeah, if people want to reply in the chat whether or not they have the they've downloaded the project, I should have emailed it to all of you. So you should be able to open it if you have Adobe um, Photoshop. Yeah, we have it, man. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Derek's, uh, I'm trying to see who Derek says. Just so you know, we're recording this for um, pl playback on our channels. And um, and we're going to be probably putting on social media too. So if you don't want to show up in the video, I just ask that you mute your camera and your microphone. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, if, if you all have, um, whoever does has have the project downloaded, um, if you want to open it up in Photoshop right now, you should be looking at a similar screen um, as mine. Cool. And once, that, once that's open, I'm just going to kind of take you through just some general things really quick, just so you can kind of understand what's going on in this workspace. Um, so up here is your your menu options, which is really great for navigating when you first don't really know what to do inside of Photoshop because everything's labeled really well. So um, everything that you want to do uh, through like sort of editing, transforming an image, size, copying, pasting, it's all going to be labeled here. And you can notice that like if you look right next to the the um, the command that you're going to do, uh, there's actually uh, shortcut keys, which is really helpful at first when you don't memorize those things, but if you just kind of keep in the back of your mind while you're looking at these different things, you can start to kind of understand like, oh, okay, that's how I'm gonna do that command um, through through keyboard shortcut. Um, so through the image tab, this one's kind of important to look at. Um, it'll kind of define what your image will uh, look like. So if you're in um, grayscale, it's only gonna be in grayscale. Right now it should be in RGB, which is great for working on screens. Um, CMYK is something that we'll use for um, print matter, which right now we're just going to focus on RGB um, and 8-bit channel is fine because um, it's, it's a good enough quality for that. Um, and you'll notice some of these familiar tools if you're really quickly just wanting to edit some um, photos. There's some auto contrast, auto color, and auto tone tools, which are really helpful just to kind of get things done quickly. But it does work in a destructive way where it kind of affects your image and you can't really, un you can undo it, but um, it's kind of a permanent change where I'll show you how to kind of work in a non-destructive way, which is really helpful when you're working in Photoshop um, so that you can always refer back to the, the original image. Um, you'll find information like uh, image size and canvas size here. Uh, the layer tool is, it's pretty great to kind of look inside of here and, and work through. Um, Layers are really important in Photoshop, especially when you're working with multiple layers. Um, right now, you'll look to the, the right-hand panel and you'll see that we have three layers open, but you're only seeing the topmost layer. Um, we'll work through kind of how to navigate um, moving through those and how to kind of push those forward and back. But you can see here, there's a rough overview of how to work through layers. Um, type is just everything that has to do with type. Selection is a um, really great tool for selecting um, different parts of your image. I'm going to show you guys a little bit more in depth how to go through that, um, just because the selection tool is super powerful, especially when you're um, just trying to work on specific parts of an image, or let's say copy and paste something. Um, it's really important to kind of understand those. Filter gallery and 3D are kind of just like the fun parts of Photoshop, where you can just kind of have some fun with different um, effects that will be applied to your image. Um, we won't be going through a lot of those today. We'll just kind of just go through a rough over through overview of some of these uh, other tools. Um, and then this tool is kind of important here up in the menu, uh, it's your window. And this is really great for if something's hidden that you need to get to, um, you'll probably find it under here. Um, and then the help tool, of course. And then if you look over here to your left, docked to the left-hand side of your canvas, you should see a whole bunch of tools. Um, we're gonna go into the specifics of how to work these, but if you can see like right now as I'm hovering over each of them, um, what's coming up is a Photoshop's tool tips, which is really helpful when, you, when you're first getting familiar with it. Um, it displays the shortcut to, to the tool and it also has these really cool learn hows, um, which are super great for like beginners. Um, I went through a few of these and it's actually really fun. It kind of takes over your interface a little bit. Um, and it'll work with you to get more familiar with these different tools. And then on the right-hand side, these are your different uh, panels. 
Uh, this is your layer panel, channels panels, which is all the different colors, um, paths, which we don't have any right now. And then properties will just show you the display properties of whatever image or layer you have selected. Um, your adjustment um, panel here, we're gonna go through some of these and then we'll show you how you can adjust photos with using these. Um, instead of using something like auto tone or auto contrast, you can actually go in and specifically um, dictate which ones you wanna work with here. Libraries is, is your creative cloud, creative cloud libraries. So that's a, if you have a creative cloud account and you have different things filed, stored there, you'll, you'll see it there. Um, color, swatches, gradients, kind of self-explanatory. This tool right here is really important though. Um, I refer to it a lot when I'm working. Um, it's your history brush um, and it's your history panel. So when anytime you do something in Photoshop, it'll actually start to tell you, it'll populate down here and you can click on the different steps to kind of get back to where you need to be. Um, if you click this image here, it'll actually take you back to the, the your first initial image, which is really great. Um, and I'll show you a little bit how to work that when we when we start making some adjustments. And then another really quick uh, tip is like when you're working with photos, different photos, you want to see your image on different backgrounds. Sometimes this black is a little jarring, or maybe you have some some dark grays or blacks on the corner. You can't really see where your image is. If you just right click the background, um, you can change the color of that to black. Let's say you want to see what it looks like um, on you know a mat, a different color mat. It kind of shows you here. So that's always helpful, especially if you're working on different. Um, with darker images, um, especially since that's kind of just the default there. And then just in case you really are kind of lost inside of this space and you just wanna figure out something really quick, um, a really great shortcut is Command F and it'll bring up your um, find tool or your discover tool. And this is really great. It's super fun to kind of get into some of these orientations and photo editing tips. Um, like I said, it kind of takes over your screen and brings you into an, another page in the interface. And it'll show you different different ways to kind of work through the tool step by step. So it's kind of like what you're looking at right now with me, um, except it, it'll happen on your screen and it'll be really fun. So you can search for anything that you need to in here and it's really helpful. Um, it does a pretty good job of finding the tool that you'll, you'll need. <clears throat> All right, so once you open up a photo, um, what you want to do is look at it in different ways. Um, and we can do that in the view menu. We can zoom in one, um, 100%. Um, you can do that even more through that, just pushing 200%. Um, and then to get back to just the full image, you want to hit command zero and that'll take you, it'll zero everything out and take you right back to the full image. So anytime you're doing any sort of zooming and you get really lost, or let's say you zoom out completely, if you hit command zero, it's gonna bring you right back to this space, which is really helpful, especially if you're working with really small images or really big images, um, or you're just really getting into the detail. Um, but that's just one way to kind of zoom in and zoom out. You can see in the view menu here, it tells you command plus and command minus, um, which is really great, but you don't really have any control of where you're going with that. It just kind of zooms into where, where you were looking. Um, so, a better way to, to zoom in and out of a photo is gonna be the actual zoom tool, which is just Z and you can find it over here. It's this little magnifying glass. And basically with this, you have a little bit more control of where you're zooming. Um, it, it goes into wherever you click. If you just hold option, you'll, you'll turn that into a negative uh, magnifying glass and it'll take you back out. If you continuously hold, it'll just kind of take you in. It's kind of, it's called an animated zoom. It's kind of fun, a little magical. Um, you could also do it by clicking and kind of dragging and you'll see that you can go uh, forward and backwards. Um, but just remember like anytime that you're in a tool, usually hitting the option key or the alt key on a, a, a Mac will show the opposite of that tool. So in this case, instead of zooming in, you're gonna zoom out which is really helpful just for like going in and out, especially when you're working on a detail of, of an image. Um, but it doesn't really help you navigate the image. You can't really like move around the image, right? You can just zoom into specific spaces. Um, and how you do that in Photoshop is to, to maneuver the space is with the hand tool, um, which is this little guy here. And you push uh, the, sh the key, key uh, keyboard shortcut is H. You can kind of just, Let's zoom back in. 
And you can kind of maneuver around that way by clicking and holding. So that's super helpful. Um, but the way that I usually na navigate around um, Photoshop is actually just with the move tool because I'm constantly kind of shifting things around on the board. Um, and through this tool, it's really helpful to kind of just know the, the keyboard shortcuts with this. Um, so if you hold the space bar while you're in the move tool, which is this one here, um, it'll bring up the hand again. So you don't even need to go and hit any keyboard shortcuts um, like H again. You can just stay inside of the move, move tool, hold the hand tool and maneuver around. If you hold the hand tool uh, plus the command tool or the control tool uh, or the control key on a Mac or a PC, sorry, I had those two confused, um, it'll zoom you in. So you don't even need to go to the zoom key anymore. And if, and if you hold spacebar, command and option, it'll bring, you, bring up the uh, magnifying glass and you can um, zoom out. So it's really helpful to kind of just stay in one tool like that and just be able to maneuver really quickly. Um, that's often how I'm kind of working through a space just because it's a lot easier to kind of maneuver around without clicking in and out of different tools. You can kind of just stay inside of one tool like that, which is super helpful. All right. And then, um, so let's look over at the panel, uh, the layer panel over here. And you can see that we have different layers here. They're all um, smart objects except for the background layer, which every time you open up a photo in Photoshop, it automatically turns that photo into like a, a background layer and it'll lock it. Um, you can simply unlock it just by doing that. And you can actually, from there, um, you'll be able to edit it. As long as something's locked, you won't be able to. So all you need to do to unlock an image is that. So anytime that you open up an image, just keep that in mind, because if you try to like do anything, you'll just get a little, um, it's a little, a little sign that says, nope, you can't do that. So uh, yeah. And then to simply rename a, a layer, you just double click and we'll call this layer one. Um, it's really helpful to keep everything organized, especially when you're working with different, um, a bunch of different layers and, and different images within one project. Uh, so I like to just rename all my layers. Um, you know, we can specifically name name this like the orange layer or the avocado layer, but um, I'm simply just gonna name them layer one, layer two. And then that gets into something else. If you hit the eyeball, it'll turn the layer off. It'll turn, um, and you'll be able to see the layer below it. If you turn all of them off, you'll just see this pixel grid here, which means that nothing is there. There's no information. So Photoshop's just showing you the grid. Um, and from there, you can actually, if, if something isn't visible, you can maneuver, um, work with the image below it and you won't actually affect the image that you have turned off. So that's super helpful just to kind of memorize and you can kind of rearrange them just by holding and dragging. So it's really great to kind of just familiarize yourself with the different layers in case you are working with multiple, um, multiple layers inside of a project. And then that kind of brings me to the selection tool. Um, so we have this marquee tool, which is a rectangular marquee tool. And you'll see once you kind of select a part of an image, you'll see the marching ants. And this means that this section of the image is selected right now. Um, you have a whole bunch of different sizes that you can kind of work with in here. Um, you have ovals, ellipses, and rectangles. Um, a lot of the times what I'm using is the lasso tool, which is this guy right here. You can get to it just by pushing the L key. Um, and this one is something that you can draw yourself. So you can just kind of create your own little lasso and you'll see the marching ants. Um, if you want to get rid of something that you've selected, you can either just start drawing something else with the selection tool, or you can hit Command D um, or Control D. And you'll just um, deselect everything on the board. D, Command D stands for deselect. Um, so we can see here that uh, using something like the frame tool, you can frame part of the object and you'll show the layer underneath it. So that's kind of helpful in creating um, these different types of masks, which is really fun to kind of play with. But um, what I usually use to create a mask is the selection tools themselves. So let's say I want to just select something like this. You go over there and we can go to this tool over right beneath the layers panel and it's called um, the clipping mask tool. 
and it looks kind of like a rectangle with a, a black circle in it. And you add a layer mask and this everything else that's outside of the selection that you've made will be hidden. So it's it's a lot better than deleting something. So if I were to kind of go backwards and then just hit Command X, which is cut. Oh, one important thing I forgot to tell you guys. Um, a lot of times when you open up an image inside of uh, Photoshop, if it's not just one image, um, which it'll automatically turn into a background layer, you'll notice that there's a little file here. And that means that Photoshop has turned it into a smart object. Basically what it, it's, what's happening when it's a smart object is it's retaining all the information that the photo has come with it. So file name, um, RGB, all sorts of different things, but it'll also increase the size of your file. And you won't be able to manipulate any of the pixels in there because there aren't any, it's just kind of just a file. Um, if you wanna start manipulating the actual image, you have to rasterize it. So you wanna right click on the, on the layer and hit rasterize layer. And from there, this is all pixel information now. Photoshop can actually manipulate it. And if you were to hit cut, you would cut that piece of um, the image out, which is just destroying all of those pixels. So um, you're working in a destructive sort of path. Um, how, did which you, is some, how did you cut that? Uh, Command X. Okay. Or Control X. Are you using, question, are you using the lasso, you're using the lasso tool to select it, right? And then if you press Command X, it'll sort of like cut that right out of the picture. Yep, yeah. So um, the Command X is under the edit tool here. We can see that, um, where is it? Oh. Oh, Command X is, is cut and then copy and then paste. So those ones are, are tools that you should get familiar with, just the Command V, Command C and Command X. Um, so if we were to just select this radish here, we have this part of the image selected. So we're going to Command X and it destroys it. Those pixels are gone unless I hit Command Z, which is undo, another really important command uh, to know, uh, keyboard shortcut. Um, but if we were to say Command C, um, it's copying all of that information there. And then uh, Command V is paste. So you're not really seeing anything because it pasted directly into the space that you had selected. But if you were to move it, you have another radish. Um, is there a reason why it wouldn't cut? Is there a reason why you wouldn't be able to, like I'm trying to cut what you're talking about and it's not letting me. Okay, so um, if you're looking at your layer over here, do you still see the little file image next to the the uh, thumbnail? Um, yes. Yeah, so what you wanna do is make sure that the layer is selected right click the layer and then hit rasterize layer. Okay. And now when you have um, a section of the image selected, you can actually delete it, it or you should be able to, whoops. Make sure you have that the correct layer also selected. Okay. And if I wanna delete a layer, I can hit that trash can, right? Yep, deleting layers will um, be the trash can. Uh, creating new layers is this little plus button right next to it. And then this other one next to it is create a group. So it's really helpful when you want to mask um, a group, um, which we'll get into masking in a little bit. Okay. But um, yeah, that's just a way to kind of organize your files there. And Damien, before you rasterized it, was it more like, like an illustrator file or what, what's going on there? Like why, why did you have to rasterize it, I guess? It's, it's very similar to a Illustrator file. You can almost think of it like um, as a, a, a vector or something. It's just one flat plane of information instead of a whole bunch of pixels for Photoshop to read. Instead, it's just a, a file. So what, why it does that is just because if you want to uh, scale the image um, or manipulate the image oh, in that way, right. it won't affect the information on the on the actual image, and if you were to save that out, it would it would retain all of the information that it came with. So it would retain like sometimes there's you know information like destination, time, um, mm -hmm. even who who took the photograph. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's there's a lot of information which makes the file sizes really big. But the second that you turn it into a rasterized layer, which you'll need to to do any sort of photo manipulation um, mm -hmm. on the actual pixels. Um, it just turns it into pixel pixel information, which you can kind of see when you zoom way in. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah. Yeah, uh, feel free to ask any questions along the way too, guys. I, I feel like I'm kind of breezing through some of this because I know there's a lot that I want to try to get through. Um, but yeah, if I go over something that kind of just goes over anyone's head, just feel free to let me know um, and we'll work through it that way. But yeah, so um, working with the selection tools, um, these are really great tools, especially if you're trying to manipulate specific parts of an image. I've, sh I've kind of shown you the lasso tools here um, but there's there's some really fun tools within the lasso tool which will help you kind of work through selecting image or selecting specific parts of the image quicker. Um, Photoshop uses AI um, really well actually it's gotten really great over the years um, to kind of uh, help you in making making things happen. So what I've done here is I've just selected if you hold um, or click and hold over a tool you'll see that it brings up multiple tools um, and the Paula Oh, uh, this one always trips me up. Polygonal lasso tool um, creates straight lines. So this is really great when you're working with, you know, um, buildings or things with flat edges. Um, not so much with organic shapes like a radish. But there is a tool inside here that is really great for things like this radish that's really high contrast against this white background. So if you have the um, magnetic lasso tool selected, you'll start by clicking a section along the, the line here where the color meets the white. And Photoshop will use AI to kind of detect the pixels around there um, and just starts creating a path for you. So it's really great. Um, it's actually pretty, pretty good at selecting these things. Um, you'll see here, like it left out part of the radish up there, which is because I was mostly working with this darker red. Um, and what you can do to kind of dictate, okay, I need some, I need this to continue here is just click um, and it'll create another point. And then it's usually pretty good, but sometimes you just kind of have to manually click the points there. So there's some parts of this where it's not the greatest, but it does a really great job. Like you can quickly go around something um, instead of like trying to draw it freehand where it'd be a lot harder. So you can see here, it did a really great job of selecting those things. Um, and once that's actually selected, you can see up here, your menu options have changed um, and you can feather your selection, which will create a softer edge, um, which is really great when you're working with things um, like these rounded corners or these rounded shapes because they don't have such stark ends. Uh, usually there's a little bit of, of light that kind of curves around the object. So feathering it is a really great way to kind of bring back that softness. Um, I like to usually just work in like one or two pixels um, <clears throat> of feathering, just because if you go too much, it begins to look a little like cloudy. Um, and I can show you what that looks like when you copy it and then paste it. And you can see there, it's not the hardest edge. It's a little bit smoother than it would be um, if, if it didn't have a feather at all. So you can see the, the magnetic lasso tool is actually a really great tool to kind of um, quickly select things. But Photoshop actually has a better tool for quickly selecting things, um, which is this tool right below, which is the object selection tool. Uh, shortcut to get there is W. Um, and if you click, click here, you can see the earlier iterations of this tool, which was the magic wand tool, the quick selection tool, and then finally we have this one. So I'll show you kind of in order how they, how they work. Um, the, the magic wand tool here will once you click, it starts to select pixels that are similar to the area that you um, picked. So you can see here, I selected this area right here and it instantly grabbed similar pixels. Um, if you hold the shift key, it brings up a little plus right next to um, the magic wand and you can begin to add even more. So this was kind of the first way um, when I first started using Photoshop, I began to quickly select things. Um, and it was actually really good. It does a really good job of selecting just the, the like pixels. Um, but there is another tool here and we'll just hit command D to get out of there. The quick selection tool, which does something similar, but it does it works a lot quicker by selecting pixels in proximity to where you are selecting. So it does it really quickly. Um, that's why they call it the quick selection tool, I guess. Um, but you can see, you can kind of just work with this a little bit more um, if you don't want part of, let's say I don't want this green part, if you hit the option key, it'll bring up the minus inside of your paintbrush. 
and you just hit that and it'll start subtracting. So it's really great at quickly um, selecting different parts of an image. And then finally, the object selection tool, which is really great. Again, it uses AI to figure out, it looks at the whole image and it tries to select like, okay, this is the one object that you're trying to select and usually does a really good job of doing it. Um, there, you know, it's, it's AI, so it's, it takes a while to kind of be perfect, but um, usually it's really good, especially if the image is high contrast. Usually if you try to do something that's a little bit more or less contrast, uh, it doesn't do that great of a job, but you can see how it, it took a little bit to think, but it figured it out and that's what we wanted. Um, let's see, let's try something a little bit more complex, like this area here with this line and see what it ends up selecting. I didn't find an object. Oh, that's because we're here. Damien, on that magnetic lasso tool, if you wanted yep. to do something similar, like I didn't, I was trying to do it and I, I, I didn't place this. Can you replace those little nodes? Um, no. So in, in magnetic lasso, it kind of just goes, um, which is a little frustrating, but there is a tool that I use similar to exactly what it's doing there um to kind of go back because if you try to go backwards you'll notice that it's just trying it's backtracking and creating a line you know back that way but once you close the circle there if you wanted to subtract all of this um you could go back again and then just hit the option key click again and then try to fix fix the area that you kind of goofed up on um yeah so that's it's a little bit tricky but um in instances where I kind of feel a little bit more confident in going in and getting better detail myself, um, I'll use something like the pen tool, um, which is essentially what the um, magnetic lasso is doing. So you'll see to create a point, all you need to do is uh, click. And then you know, if you just click another point, it's gonna create a straight line, um, which for this kind of a shape isn't really helpful. Um, and if any of you guys have worked in Illustrator, it's the same exact thing. So if you were to click and hold, you've got these little um, these little Bezier curves kind of going on here. And you'll see you can kind of manipulate the curve that way, which is really great. Um, and that's how you kind of maneuver through an image that way. And if you were to say create a point out here and that's not where you wanted, um, in this tool, you actually could go back and adjust that point. So all you need to do is make sure you're still in the tool um, hit the command key or the control key and select that point. You'll notice that that direct selection um, pointer comes up and that's the little white one, which is great. But let's say you wanted a little bit of a, more of a curve. If you hit the option key while you're hovering over, you'll see that little carrot shape and you can actually create a curve to it. Uh, for some reason, this is, I think it's because it already has a curve to it. But yeah, um, you can hit Control Z also if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, so um, you can go around the object and kind of create a path really quickly. There is just one final step if you are using the pen tool for a selection is you'll have to go up to this menu that's, that's changed for the pen tool and hit selection. Um, and this one automatically gives you uh, a feather radius. Um, so like I said, when you're working with objects, usually it's it's better to have a little bit of a feather on it. Um, so it doesn't look so fake when you're cutting something out, especially if you're trying to uh, blend it into an image. Um, so we'll just have like a one pixel right now and you'll see that it's created an actual um, selection. So that's one way if you have a really particular selection that you wanna make. Um, but what I like to do is work in tandem with um, the object selection tool and then from there, you can work with these other um, tools. So let's say you already have a selection that you've made from um, the object selection. It left out this part here and you want to freehand this part. You go to the lasso tool. And if you were to start drawing again, it actually is going to start creating another selection, which is something you don't want. So if you hold the shift key, you'll see the little plus sign and you'll be able to actually draw a little bit more. And um, you can add to your selection that way. And in the same way, if you hit option, you could subtract that away. So working with selections is really important, especially um, when it comes to using uh, some of the other tools. 
So getting familiar with those tools at first is, is, is a great way to kind of work your way through Photoshop. Um, another great way to kind of quickly select things, which um, let's see, is in the select menu here and you get to it through so here. There's no, there's no shortcut for it. Um, and you just click uh, color range here and you'll see that it brings up this, this sort of black and white image. And what it's showing you right here is everything that's selected um, right now it has like, oop, it has everything um, selected from a previous drop that I have. But if I were to select just with this eyedropper, it'll select those pixels. And you'll see now it's only selecting pixels that are similar in color to that. If I want to add more, I can manually click this and then just start clicking around my radish. And it's going to start selecting the other radish on the screen or any other color that matches this. Um, which is really cool. Um, and you can also in the same hand hit minus. If you are using just this dropper here and you wanna quickly go plus and minus, again, um, subtracting is gonna be your option and adding is gonna be shift. But you'll see here, it's selected all of those really well, um, just awesome. Um, another great one in there is um, subject, which works really well with like, um, well, it, it uses AI to figure out what the subject is in your image. And right now Photoshop is saying, since this is the biggest thing, this is the most in focus thing, this is the subject of your um, of your photo. So to quickly select things like that, it works great for portraits. If you have like a face that you're trying to, uh, you know, manipulate the color on the background and just you wanna work on the face, um, that's a really great tool there. But um, let's see here. And D, yep. So uh, when you select something, let's say you want to select um, a certain part of an image, but you want to actually show, you know, you want to mask it so it only shows this part of the image and you want to show um, the object below. Because this is, is selected here, you can create a clipping mask. And they're really fun to do to kind of start collaging different parts of your image. And like I said, this is the non-destructive way of cutting around an image. Um, it's really helpful just in case you still want to retain this information. Otherwise, if we were to just cut this little shape out right here, everything else, all the other pixel information would be lost to us. Um, so these are really great for that. Um, but it's also really great for working in uh, you know, your adjustment sections over here, which you can just manipulate certain parts of an image. So now I'm only adjusting the levels of just the radish. So let's say there's a dark part of your image and you really wanna focus in on that. Um, creating a mask for that is really great. And if we were to kind of look at that mask again, you notice I've kind of captured um, part of, of this actual background, which is turning turning it black or a little bit darker, um, which is something we don't really want. So to manually go in and kind of uh, fix a mask, what you want to do is, um, let's start with the regular brush here, is go to your brush tool, which is your B, B tool. And I'll take you right there. And let's just click a general soft round brush okay and what you can do is it's actually using these colors right here so you can see white is the color above so that's your primary color that's being used and if you were to draw on this you're actually adding to the layer mask so anything that's white is adding more of the layer mask which is the opposite of what we want here so if you hit this button right here or the keyboard shortcut to switch quickly while you're in the brush tool is X. So you can see pushing X will um, move those back and forth, alternate the two. You can start to paint away the mask. So you're only manipulating the section of the image within your mask, which is really great to kind of refine your masks. Um, it's a really great way to kind of uh, quickly kind of work an image in into, um, well, let's see, if I were to do that again, let's select that. And then we'll mask this part of an image. 
you'll see here there's a lot of fuzzy fuzzy sort of lines because I didn't really feather it that great. Well, you can go in with the brush tool and refine it even more just to kind of get rid of some of that pixel information. And if right now my brush is set to 100% opacity, which isn't the greatest for something like this where you're trying to blend. So I usually turn it down halfway. And um, let's see, brush size is pretty good right now, but I want to make it a little bit bigger just to give it a little bit more of a softer edge. And to quickly do that is the bracket tools, which you'll find right above the return key. Um, so bracket right is going to make it bigger. Bracket left is going to make it smaller. If you want to quickly just get to your brush menu, you can right click and you'll see here you can change the size and the hardness there, which right now we want it soft just because it's, it's probably better to use that. And then we can start to do that. And you can see how it's sort of subtly adding a little bit of that mask there and it's feathering it out instead of bringing in such a sharp edge, but you're kind of seeing through the image. So that's not the greatest. And another way to kind of quickly uh, mask out an image in case um, you uh, didn't want to use the paintbrush is again, using the selection tool, we can go there make sure that our mask is selected here. And it's the same sort of idea here. We're just gonna use the paint, bush, uh, the paint bucket, which is G. And you're adding to the mask here. So you just paint right there and you gotta make sure you're actually clicking the area. And you'll notice that because there's pixel information here that was feathered, it'll leave a faint line. So you actually have to make sure that those are clicked. Sometimes you have to click multiple times if you just kind of click throughout the actual selection, it'll help. Um, and then again, if you hit X, um, you're opening up that mask even more. So there we go. Um, let's see. Let's say that these two layers were actually um, masked here and um, you wanted to control the scale of this for some reason, um, you could quickly unlink that. And the second that you unlink your mask from your image and you're in the move tool, you can actually move the image from behind the mask. And you'll notice all the information is, is still there. It's not destroyed, which is really great. But as long as it's linked, once you start moving it, you're gonna move the image and the mask. So if for some reason you have something masked and you're noticing that, oh man, I'm only moving just the mask or, oh man, I'm just moving just the image, it's probably because the two aren't linked, which is only helpful if you're editing um, the mask or the, or the image behind it. So let's get back to our beginning image there. Okay, cool. So um, I kind of touched on it, but uh, using the selection tool and the masking tool um, in tandem is really great for when you're trying to adjust different parts of the image. So let's say that I want everything outside of just this bull um, selected or changed. I'm going to use the quick object selection tool to select it. And if I were to mask this, it's going to just mask only the area that I've selected, right? Which isn't what we want because I don't want to change anything on there. So what we want to do is hit Command Shift I, which is inversing the selection. If that's too much to remember, always remember you can get to it here. And all you're doing is hitting inverse. So once that's selected, you'll notice if I hit the clipping mask now, everything out um, outside of of here is being is what's in the mask. So. That's exactly what we want. What we're gonna do now is go over to the adjustments panel, make sure this is clicked here. And uh, we can hit levels. And what it'll do is it'll create, you don't really see anything happen now because it's just um, at its normal levels. But if I were to manipulate it now, you can see that everything outside of the bowl is darkening. Everything outside of the bowl is lightening. So when you're working with the levels tool, what you're doing is essentially telling the the image um, where the darkest um, black is going to lie. So right now the darkest black is black, 
but let's say I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. Um, I'll move the darkest black to there, or I'll move the brightest white down and it'll start to um, change the, the highlights to that. But you'll notice it's only happening to the sections outside there, um, which is a really great, great way to kind of quickly adjust um, the brightness of an image. So let's say we want the background to be just a little bit darker, just to give that bowl a pop, um, we can do that. And then if we wanted to, um, we could go to, um, let's try the hue and saturation. And now let's just see what happens when we move this. So everything, the entire image is being colorized um, or the, the um, pixels are being changed with these hues. You can up the saturation in really strange ways. Um, that's not what we wanna do. We don't want the entire image colorized. What we want is just this section. So anytime that you do click an adjustment layer, it's gonna be the entire image unless you have something selected, but it's already opened up this mask here. Um, so what we wanna do is bring this mask up to here. Um, and you can do that quickly instead of having to select this over again and possibly not selecting the same pixels. Um, you can just quickly replace this mask by clicking this option while holding option and then dragging it up to here. And it's gonna ask you replace layer mask and you wanna hit yes. Did I not hit yes? There we go. <laughs> oh, whoops, we lost our other one. It's okay. Um, it's cause I wasn't holding option. There we go. And so now every time that we manipulate the saturation it's happening again within the mask, which is really cool. Um, right now you're just manipulating the colors of the actual, the saturation of the actual color in there. If you wanted to, let's say colorize and turn it into a single color, what you want to do is hit colorize down here. And you'll notice that it turns everything into a hue of that color, which is really cool. You can get some like really cool cyanotype like sort of effects. Um, and I think they have even some like really cool like sepia tones. Um, it's really great for working in colors like that. So like you can imagine something like this in a menu like or something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's really, it's really great to kind of work through that. Um, and then let's see, what's another really great tool in here? Um, Damien, something that can I you, can you repeat how you did the invert part? That was really cool with the light and the dark. And I, I've been trying to remember, uh, sorry, how you did that, man. I, I got the selection, but then yeah, you did sure. some kind of invert command or I'm sorry, I was not paying attention enough. No, that's fine. It's fine. Uh, cool. So I'm going to go back and select this again. Like this right is on. what we wanted selected. And mm -hmm. are you using a Mac or window or uh, it's Macintosh? Yeah. Okay, great. So all you want to do is hit command shift and I, and that yeah. will inverse inverse your selection. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. and, then... and if you ever get lost and um, you can't remember that command, just remember right. that you're in the selection. So what you wanna do is go to the select menu and you'll oh. notice you can ha hit these different things here and there's inverse right at the bottom. Thank you. I totally see it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, Thanks, man. great. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, so that's a, a quick way to do that. And then, um, Another fun tool to use in here, the rest, these tools are pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you have worked with any sort of um, photo manipulation, um, like black and white is gonna turn your image black and white. Um, but a, a really fun one that I like to use a lot is the gradient map. And it will start to gradient map um, your image based on the bright and dark tones, which is really cool to quickly turn your image into something else. I use this a lot for like sports advertising and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you can do some really fun stuff like that. And if you want to change the colors of your um, gradient, I think yours might be black and gray at the initial start. Um, you just click into the gradient. And then Photoshop has some really cool um, preset ones, but you can also just kind of go in there and change the color yourself. So you want to collect, uh, select this part right here and just double click it and you'll bring up the color picker and you can start to select um, the colors that you want for your your um, gradient map there. And you can do some really funky stuff here. It's really cool to kind of um, use a, a gradient map and then um, kind of uh, layer that on top of a photo. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second here. 
So we have that. Let's say I don't really like how this is happening. We could try it in reverse and see how that looks. That's a little bit more interesting. You could still see some of the detail. Dither is, um, I don't usually use it because Photoshop does a pretty good job of it. Um, but sometimes on larger images, you'll notice banding. It's just this like striation in, inside of, a, of a, a gradient. If you hit dither, it'll, it should smooth that out a little bit better. Um, but let's say I have something like this. Um, what I'd like to do is actually go down here and you'll see something that says normal. This is actually your blend modes. So this is how your lay, uh, layer is presented over the layer below it. Um, normal means that nothing's going through it. Uh, so you can, you, you're just seeing the image on top um, and the opacity right now is set at hundred. So you're not seeing anything through it. If you wanted to, you can hit the opacity to maybe halfway and you'll notice that it's just become like hued a certain color, um, which is really interesting to do. It's like a sort of a collage sort of a thing. Um, another way to do that is through fill and this will actually just work on the, the adjustment. So it's not really working. Um, it's not turning the whole layer transparent. It's just turning the, the colors. Um, but what I like to use here are the different blend modes. So you'll notice there's a whole bunch of different fun ones here. And as you start hovering through them, you'll notice the effects taking place. And here is where you can do some really fun stuff with um, different sort of blending styles. And it's just the different ways that the image is, is interacting with the layer below it. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, this is how you can really quickly manipulate um, different different photo images, uh, which is really fun. Um, another way to kind of get there is I'm going to rasterize this layer again, because I went back to the beginning. If you double click a layer here, you can do some really, really fun stuff with um, these different options here. And you'll notice this is giving you a preview of what you're doing. Um, but it's really kind of hard to see on an image in a whole what you're doing. So I usually like to work with, with selections. This works really great with type. Um, when you're working with photos, it's, it's a little bit harder to kind of get in here, but you can also do a gradient overlay, but because it's just one part, it's the whole, um, so the whole selection is just taking over the, the entire frame. You don't have anything selected. So, um, that's what happens, unfortunately, but yeah, let's see. Okay, we went through the gradient map. Cool. Um, let's look through. Let's look through uh, some tools now. Um, these tools are going to come in handy, especially when you're working with an uh, image that you probably want to touch. Um, and that'll be. We'll start with. Actually, let's start with the crop tool. So, crop tool is something you know you really quickly want to resize an image. Initially, when you um, when you select the crop tool, it'll put your little frames around here and you can actually adjust from that, which is really one way to do it. Um, or what you can do, let's clear that, is just, oops, sorry. When you initially select this, if you were to drag and click before manipulating, you create your crop section. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, if you have a specific ratio that you're trying to make, uh, let's say that you're working for like Instagram or something, they have one by one squares, um, four by five, which is kind of the a traditional size. Um, and then you'll notice here that it will list like four by five. If you want to um, flip that, you just hit those arrows and it'll start to turn your, um, your crop. If you want to start adjusting this now, it's going to stay within those dimensions of the four by five. So that can be a little frustrating, especially if you want to freehand it. Um, all you have to do to kind of get out of a ratio that you were kind of looking at is just hit clear and then you're back to kind of freehanding it as you want. Which I didn't know at first and it was really frustrating because I would sometimes um, like have original ratio selection selected and this is actually the original ratio of your photo and you can't really manipulate it and it starts to bug me so just make sure that if that ever happens you can hit clear and you can kind of edit your own way um, uh, the crop tool uh, will initially start with the rule of 
three grid. So if that's not your jam, you can just go up here uh, to this little grid grid icon here and you can change it up. And if you wanna quickly cycle through them while your crop tool is selected, just hit the O key and you'll start to see the different ones. You get really funky with that uh, golden spiral. Anyone works within the golden section? It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the crop tool, really simple. Um, to make sure that your changes are effective, you can go up here and hit the check mark and that will create your crop. And the second that you do that, all of the information outside of your frame is gone. It's deleted. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you don't want that to happen, what you can do is while you're inside of the crop tool and you have it selected, you want to deselect delete cropped pixels. And then if we were to hit check mark, and then you were to move your image, you'll notice that there is still information where um, the rest of the oranges were. So that's also another way to kind of work non-destructively, um, especially if you want to get back to where, where you were. And then another quick way to kind of just finish off, off the command is just hit enter and you'll get there. And then, um, so after you've kind of manipulated the size of your image, you might want to um, touch up different parts of your image. And we can do that using the spot healing brush, which is something that I use a lot, um, uh, not just to kind of work on spots. So initially, I think this was made to kind of work out blemishes and different things like that, or not just blemishes on faces, but on photos. Um, so I'm going to show you how it works here within this layer. You'll notice that right now um, it, it is showing that little, little diagonal do not enter <laughs> sign. And that means that my layer isn't rasterized. So like I said in the beginning, you just want to make sure that your layer is rasterized. And now it's pixel information. So now uh, Photoshop can actually understand what it is I'm trying to do. So. Go over here, make sure that the healing brush is selected. And what you want to do now is if you start drawing, Photoshop is going to yell at you and it's going to say option click to define a source. Um, and what you're doing here is you're defining where Photoshop is going to grab pixel information from. So what you do is you hit the option key and you'll notice you'll get a little crosshair and you're telling you're going to tell Photoshop this is where I want um, pixel information to to let's say heal this section here um, because this area is like a different color than this area we want to try to get a little bit closer here so i'm going to select an area that's right here and now you can see the brush is loaded and you can see the source where it's drawing from is the section section that i've selected and if i were to click again it is drawing and it's covered up that little um the little stem of, of the orange there. And if I were to do that again, you'll see that it's just drawing from the same exact spot. You'll see the little crosshair every time. And you're not really noticing a difference there because it's just an orange. And uh, Photoshop actually blends a little bit um, while you're doing that. So it's pretty helpful. Um, but let's say that you wanted to turn this area into oranges too. Uh, well, it's not going to work really well because I have it down to that there we go but what it does is it blends the layers together so it's actually drawing the texture in there you it's really it might be difficult to see but it's taking away that carpeted texture and starting to draw from there um, and another way to kind of define um, how to uh, work with the source instead of selecting from the same spot every time we can click aligns there and what it'll do is it'll start to draw information and you'll see that the source is now changing, which is really helpful, especially for something like this, where the colors start to change and get brighter. It's going to try to match that. So you'll notice it's selecting pixels from where that's going. But if I want it to just select from a certain spot, we just use that.
an easier way to do that is just through the spot healing tool. So there's no option um, clicking, defining the source here. Instead, Photoshop is going to grab pixels from the area you're selecting and just kind of um, use AI to kind of figure out what it's masking. So you'll see when you start clicking and drawing with the spot healing, you'll see a little dark um, sort of paint spots. And then once you release, Photoshop will use the information from around it to cover that area. So instead of having to define a source here, you can quickly just cover sections, which is really cool. Um, like I said, right now, what we're doing is working destructively. It's actually working on top of the image, uh, which is something we don't want. So if we wanted to work in a way non-destructive, um, we create a layer right above that layer and make sure that this layer is selected. And in order for this to work, we need to make sure that sample all layers is selected. Otherwise, if you were to do this and it's not, nothing happens. You're wondering why nothing happens. Well, there's no information inside of this layer. So it's not, it's not selecting any pixels. But if you were to um, make sure that that sampled all layers and it's just sampling all visible layers, you can quickly select and do that. And now it's covered. And if you were to turn that layer off, you can see the layer underneath it. And then to illustrate that even further, this is where you've painted the new information. So that's a great way to work non-destructively. Um, and then let's say you get towards the end um, of your image and you wanna merge those layers together. You're saying, this is my final and I'm done. I'm not gonna make any more edits. You select both layers, and to do that, you select one layer, hold shift, select another layer, right click, and hit merge layers. And now they're one. Um, again, this is a destructive act, so it's not something you can um, you know, go back and fix. Um, otherwise, you can just hit Command Z, go backwards, or let's say, we're stuck here and we want to revert back to our initial images without any of these masks. Uh, we can go up here to our history panel. And this is kind of what I was telling you in the beginning. And you'll notice now everything that you've done inside of Photoshop is uh, saved here. There's a part in your preferences where you can kind of um, dictate how many steps you actually want. I think it, initially it does like 27 or something like that. Um, the more you do, the more Photoshop will kind of be labored to work um, and your file size will become huge. Um, so just keep that in mind and you can just go back to a certain point just by clicking. Let's say I wanna go back before I started using the healing brush. I wanna go back to the initial photo. I just click this. And now we're back at the very, very beginning. Both of my layers are, are smart objects again and uh, nothing has been touched. Uh, so that's really an interesting kind of way to work. Um, um, this tool saved me so many times just because um, if you make a mistake and you've, and you've worked in a, a destructive way, you can always go backwards and kind of try to figure out where you were. Um, and there's another really great tool. Um, yeah, let's just, let's talk about it, um, which is the history brush, which is this guy right here. And you can get to it by hitting Y. And you'll notice the little tool up here selected and below it are these little check marks or <laughs> check marks. And you can go to, let's go back way further than, or let's keep us here. But before we started doing any of those and go to our layer now. And we could start drawing and it's turning the image. It's taking us back all the way to, oh, when we had a new layer, that's why. But essentially what it's doing is drawing away what we had already done. So um, it's really interesting tool to use when you've painted something. Um, it's a lot easier to show that way. Let's see. So let's say we turn this layer on here this layer on here, and let's turn this layer on here. We wanna go back to how it was before. We use our history brush tool.
and we'll start to maybe the gradient app. Oh, it's because we have hue and saturation. There we go. Layer visibility. Yeah, it works better with um with something that you've you've actually drawn and created. Apologize for that. Um, okay, let's go through. How's everyone doing? Is am am I going too fast through these these uh these tools? Can we take a, a dinking break where we just kind of dink around with them real quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. Could, let's see here. Looks like somebody wants it. I might call Damien if you don't mind. I might call on people. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then I'm. Derek's, uh, let's see here. I don't know if they left or still back in here. Okay. Do anybody, does anybody have questions for Damien? I'm gonna pause here and go to the grid view. I know it's a lot to go through, guys. So just any questions, anything that you're curious about learning in Photoshop, um, yeah, just let me know. And I have a couple more tools that I want to show you as well. Maybe we could, um, if we could pause and just ask what something that people have learned so for so far, um, and I can sure. go down the list. Yeah. Lord, um, Lorena. Dime. ¿Qué has aprendido? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> you, you know, I haven't used uh, Photoshop for a long time and it's uh, totally forgot. Yeah. And I think I um, I learned about how to use the layers. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure a lot's changed too. Every, every year Photoshop is coming out with new features that just blow my mind. So I'm like, whoa. I can't believe we can do this kind of stuff now. Yeah, no, I, I'm fascinated with um, the new stuff. And um, yeah, I was very excited learning about how you change the layers and how you was able to do all the cut. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that you want to use Photoshop for? Uh, yes. Well, I do some videos and sometimes I have to do, for, um, I do photos and I like to kind of cut in editing. But mm -hmm. since I don't have the program, I don't use it much. Uh huh. But uh, yeah. I um, I think now I'm getting excited again. I might sign again and, and start probably playing with. Yeah, yeah. There's even some um, there's some actual video um, sort of editing that you can do inside Photoshop. The only thing is its export options aren't great, so you can't really you can't export like movies from it. Um, it does a really good job of, let's say you have a, a part of a film that you've taken and you want to turn it into a 30 second, a 15 second um, motion GIF. Mm -hmm. um, you can drop an, a, a video in, into Photoshop and export it as a GIF really quickly. And I could even show you how that works if I have a video. Let's see, I might not have a video on on deck, but yeah, if that's something you want to go over, I can I can grab something and and definitely show you how to do that. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, let me see if I can pull something up. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't have microphone. Uh... While he's doing that, David, did you want to share something that you've um, you've learned while he's pulling that example up? Yeah, 
All right, while we're waiting for David to respond, um, Megan, anything you'd like to share on, on something that you've learned? Yeah, I've, I've just really valued being able to see the some of the different things that Photoshop can do because um, I think it's hard to get an overview of that um, without really knowing how to use it. So I'd be interested in um, maybe just kind of talking a little bit more about if you were going to like work on a flyer, would you, what elements of that might you use Photoshop for, or I don't know, just like maybe some different projects that you've worked on, Damien. Um, yeah. That'd be kind of cool to hear, but yeah, yeah enjoying it and definitely going to be referencing the recording because there's a lot you've covered already. Cool. Yeah, I can go through um, how I kind of work through different layouts. Um, I work through uh, work with Photoshop a little differently when I'm working in sort of different layouts, especially um, if I'm working um, digital versus print. Um, so which one do you find that you're generally working in? They mean, are you asking me or? Yes, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm typically working digital. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great, I'll show you my digital workflow then because that's it's pretty straightforward, but um, I feel like it's it'll at least help when. Okay, cool. I think I've downloaded an MP4 that I can show really quickly. Okay, so um, if you have an MP4, and then this is for Lorena, if you have an MP4, um, all you need to do is, and this works with dot moves too, um, so movies, um, select it and drag it into Photoshop. And it'll take a minute, it's just reading your video format. And Photoshop's going to look a little bit different in a second. So now we've got this GIF inside or this video inside of Photoshop. And uh, you'll notice that there's a little timeline down here now. And mm -hmm. you can actually just watch it, scrub through it that way. Um, it's a little slower than something like After Effects. But if you want to quickly just pump out a GIF, I use this all the time. Um, it works better really short. So let's say we only want like 15 seconds of this. Okay. We're going to move the crop down to there. So we're just doing that. Um, from here, what you want to do is if, if you want to really quickly adjust anything, you can create a new layer, make sure it's outside of this video layer here. Okay. And Photoshop does this really weird thing where it, it sticks the the time like it'll stick the layer at the end of this one. So you're in your timeline, you'll see that it started at the end of where this this uh, image finished, uh -huh. which isn't what you want. You want it to be the entire thing. So you just grab the end there and you'll drag it out. Oh, and I see. Yeah. So there, from there, you can apply any of these different adjustments that we were kind of talking about. Just really great. Okay. But if you want to quickly just kind of, oh, that's so funny, it has the information from the orange. If you want to quickly um, export it into a GIF, um, all mm -hmm. you do is go to File, Export. And I like to work with this one, Save for Web Legacy. OK. Um, it's, it's like a mash, mash key. You hit all of the buttons to get there. It's kind of uh -huh. crazy. Um, it'll take a second to load, so. I'm hoping that this in video is kind of easy for this. Yeah. But you'll notice this is your preview when you uh, preview window here. It's set at 100%. So I like to just make sure I'm seeing the whole thing. And you'll get all of these options here. This is your color table. It's telling you all the colors that are going to show up in your GIF. Um, and then it tells you your file size. So right now, it's not too big. It's at like 5.2 megabits, which isn't like huge. So that's fine. Um, it'll loop forever. If you want it to loop once or just play once, you hit that. Um, usually for GIFs, though, you want it to loop forever just so it just continuously goes and goes and goes and goes. Okay. Um, but you can select the amount of detail inside of a GIF just by clicking over here. 
and lowering the amount of colors will lower the file size as well, which would be really helpful for um, exporting. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice this shrunk a bunch, mm -hmm. but you're not really losing too much in, in image quality, which is fine since it's pretty, it's pretty one color. And then what you want to do is make sure you hit save not done if you were to hit done it just saves everything all the information here um, and it doesn't export anything what you want to do is hit save and then uh from there you'll get you know where do you want to save i'm gonna, just going to save to my desktop right now so we can just okay. grab it there and now when we go to my desktop we have a GIF, nice. which will loop forever. And, you know, GIFs are so much easier for like, you know, sending through texts or putting on promotional emails, putting on digital banners. Um, a lot of the time videos will have to go through players um, or load later. So these are really great to use in those sorts of things if you ever want to promote um, a video that you've made or a film you've made. Oh, nice. And how big can you do, can you do those videos? Uh, you can do these um, whatever size you want. Just keep in mind GIFs. I mean, it's um, it's a frame by frame animation. So okay. it the bigger that you make them, the bigger the file size is going to be. Um, so for something like, let's say you wanted to make this two times bigger than what it is now. Um, you could do it, but you probably want to lower the amount of colors that are in it. And that oh. way, that way it'll kind of, um, it'll, it'll lower the file size as well. Um, the only time that that gets a little weird I've noticed is, um, if you lower the colors too much and you're working with like, um, with people and skin tones and different things like that, um, sometimes it'll make it look like softer. So it works really well with illustrations and like animations um but you want to keep the the amount of of colors really high if you're using actual imagery of people and stuff like that okay great thank you yeah that that was that was good thanks cool and let's see um okay so i'm going to quickly go over um sort of my workflow for digital projects um, and, uh, Photoshop has really good, like kind of presets already made. Um, so if you're working in on a website or something like that, um, they have really good ones here. I usually just like to work in like, uh, 1200 and the height can be anything. I usually set it to just as high 1200 resolution doesn't need to be crazy high. 72 is fine. Eight bit. Um, and what I do is I make sure that artboard, artboard is selected. Um, this will be really helpful when I'm working in digital space. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. So now that we're here, um, inside of the artboard, I'm going to actually close this panel. And if you ever do something like that and a panel opens that you don't want, you can close it by clicking the little, um, it's like a little hamburger, uh, menu and just hit close, close tab. Um, or what you can do is go up to the very right corner and you'll see this little thing that looks like a tiny workspace. If you click it, you hit essentials. Oh, nothing happened. Okay. We'll hit reset essentials and it turns it back to normal. Um, okay. So when I'm working with, um, a digital layout or any sort of, you know, if I'm making an ad or an email, or, um, I'm quickly creating a homepage for somebody. Um, what I want to do is uh, the things usually have to be precise and lined up. So I hit command R um, and that'll show my rulers, um, which I use all the time. Um, and you can change how the rulers are seen by right clicking. Right now it's set to inches, which is what I usually use. Um, but sometimes if I'm just creating like a poster or something that's a little, a little more loose, um, I can change it to percentage and find the halfway mark or the 25% mark, stuff like that. But right now we're gonna work within inches. Um, and let's say I need to dictate um, that, actually, you know what? Let's work in pixels. 
it's actually easier when you're working in digital. So I wanted to make um, a guide in order to kind of set where I'm going to start, you know, let's say this is a, a header section of a website. Um, what I do here is create a guide. Um, and to do that, all you do is click on the ruler, drag down, and you'll notice that there's an actual guide there, which is super helpful. It's telling you right above where you're dragging um, how many pixels you're going down the board, which is really helpful. Uh, let's just go down like 100 pixels or so. That's fine. You can do the same thing from the side here. Right click, side there. Um, I'll, I like to name this like desktop one. And then um, from there, we could, let's say, we know that we want that to be like that. We create a rectangle shape. Um, rectangles, I use this um, tool a lot to create blocks of color. Um, and the reason why I use uh, the rectangle tool or an, uh, let's say the ellipse tool over just doing um, the marquee tool which actually I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. So I created a rectangle. From here, you can hit fill and we fill it with a color. Um, if I wanted a stroke on it, I'd hit that, but um, I don't. So you hit that little button there and it takes away the color. And the reason that I like to use these is because they're really flexible to transform and adjust. Um, you'll notice that I like to stay inside of the move tool when I'm doing a lot of this stuff. And if I were to just quickly wanting to adjust the size of this, all I need to do is hit command T, which brings you into the transform menu. You'll know that you're in it when you start to see these little um, like Boolean things around, around the, uh, the rectangle. And you can quickly drag. It's just like uh, Illustrator if you worked within it. Um, this is really good to use. Holding the option key will um, will scale things um, equally. Shift key. There we go. Um, so that's one way to kind of quickly manipulate the shapes. But I like to use that better than, let's say, um, drawing a rectangle out with your marquee tool and then using uh, a paint bucket to fill it with, let's fill it with that same blue. You have to create another layer. And now I've got this, right? So I've got two rectangles, but the reason that I like using the rectangle over creating a rectangle that way is because this is just pixels. This is nothing else, or this is a shape. So it's got a fill and a stroke that I can change quickly. I can change to another color if I wanted to. If I wanted to change this color, what I'd have to do is actually select it again and then try to paint paint over it, um, which whoops, which is a really long way about of going about it. Um, and another thing you'll find by doing that um, is that sometimes when you scale the objects, you'll notice that the edges start to get fuzzy. And it's because it's actual pixel information, whereas this is like a vector shape. Um, it didn't really get fuzzy here. It's gonna have to get really big to do that. But yeah, so that's just one way that I like to work. I, I like to work with the shape tools rather than like selecting areas, unless I'm, unless I'm quickly like doing something. Um, yeah, but then uh, let's see, I use, you know, type tools a lot. But then that, if you have something selected, it's gonna start, um, well, hold on, let me show you that again. So what you wanna do is create a new layer and then go to your type tool and you'll get this here and you drag out to create a text container. And then, um, yeah, you select your typeface here which we'll just stick with, I don't know. We'll just stick with Ariel for now. 
There we go. Um, you'll see that you have like a really simplified type menu here. Um, it's really not great when you're working with um, when you're working with layouts, especially like something like a web page or something. Um, so what I like to do is make sure Windows selected, and I'll go over and click character. And that will create this little section here added to your little flyout, uh, which is great because it has a lot more um, uh, editing tools here. So now you can quickly control letting, spacing, tracking, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and you can also control your, your paragraph tools, which is also super, whoop, super helpful if you want to quickly go through those things. Um, yeah, that's what I generally use um, quite often when I'm working with that. Um, I'll I'll frame images a bunch too instead of quickly masking things because usually in layouts you don't usually need to make really organic um, selections. Um, and I kind of went over that a little bit. Let's see, what else do I use a lot when I'm working in layouts? Hmm. I don't know. I guess, is there anything specific, Lee, that you want to check out? I can show you some, let's see, maybe I can open up a file that I've, I've been working on. Yeah. It might it, illustrate it better. I mean, it's, it's interesting just to see like how you're setting up the document and laying out. Um, I'm trying to think like, sometimes I have to make like signage and, um, things that would instruct people how to do things. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. Those are, sorry, there's some cooking happening in my house here. Oh, no, it's um, totally fine. <laughs> so those are, that are helpful. Well, OK, so let's say you are doing like a signage and then you're creating like a section that needs like, um, like there's three different steps to do something. Um, let's just say like you have three different elements. I'm just going to use these rectangles for now. Um, yeah. it, quickly duplicating something in Photoshop, you just kind of go over here, duplicate layer. And you can also write, uh, hit hold option and drag and you'll dupl duplicate that as well. And then you'll have these three different layers. And there's really great organizational tools that uh, Photoshop has now. Um, you'll see them kind of pop up here when you have something selected. So let's say I just have this center um, object selected and I wanna make sure it's dead center and it'll align it. Um, but it also has these really great tools like um, this, which will distribute your spacing horizontally, which is really great um, to kind of simply do. And if you want to see all of them, you can kind of see them all here. Um, I use this tool a lot, especially in different layouts where I need to kind of create even spacing. It'll quickly help you kind of adjust the layouts. Um, just know that like, let's say you do have all these things selected. If you were to hit that, it's going to move everything there. But if you were to hit something like horizontally aligned, let's say this guy's here and this guy's here right now, and that's not what you wanted. It'll all move it all into shape, which is really great. Um, I like to use that tool quite a bit um, just to make sure things are in line. Um, if I haven't created uh, good line guides or something like that. Um, yeah. yeah, I think those are like some kind of good starts to kind of at least start to lay things out. You know, every layout's different with with photos and yeah um, and. I mean, I think it's really helpful to just kind of see the way that you approach the work and how you're sort of like building on different layers. And it, I, I guess it might be interesting to see some of the projects that you've worked on and kind of the tools that you've used or yeah. I know yeah. you've done that here and there as we've been going through this, but um, yeah, it's totally. just really interesting. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll even try to kind of drop something over. So I've used two separate computers for work and for um you know separate stuff so i can see if i can drag some files does anyone else have any questions at the moment while i, I pull over a file or anything maybe that they want me to kind of cover there's still a couple tools that i want to show you um kind of in line with the um 
in line with uh, the healing brushes um, and photo manipulation in that way. Um, there's just a couple more that I wanted to show you. And I think it'd be super helpful just to kind of get you started on editing imagery. But for layout, I'm going to share this one. Mate and Anibal, do you have any preguntas? While they're waiting, I have a quick question. Let's say somebody were to accidentally in the text mode go into 3D mode and didn't know how to get back. How, uh -oh. do, you, how do you get out of 3D? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So you want to go to your view menu here? Can you? Yeah. OK. And then uh, let's see. There's an option that says like enter 3D mode to. Oh, for type? Yeah. Okay, if you if you select out of the layer of type, is it still 3D? Um, let me see. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I know that if you've turned a layer into a 3D layer, it'll automatically, every time you enter it, bring you into that 3D space. Gotcha. And I don't remember how to convert it back right now. <laughs> okay. Cool beans. Yeah. Let's see, I think this is going to be. Damien, have you used the sky mode at all? I've heard a lot about it and I can go and look at it later, but I was just curious, is it something that you've been in experience with? Is it cool or? Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I actually had an idea for a project for this class um, where we would recreate like the cover for um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers album where they turn like the ocean into the sky and the pool into like the sky. Uh, yeah, so anyways, but it's really it's a really cool tool and it uses like AI to kind of figure this out. Um, cool. So I think, I think it should work with this one. Um, but yeah, it's really great, especially if like you want to change what's going on there. So it did a really great job. This image is a little tougher just because it has these these animals that have the fur. Um, right. Let me just accept this really quick. But you can see it's quickly selected something like that. And then it's really fun to kind of just like, you know, manipulate there. We can change different <laughs> things like the color of the sky. These these <laughs> these little sheep are tripping out right now. <laughs> or this awesome. is like what the world will look like in the future. Well, we don't get things under control. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah. Cool. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, the sky tool is really fun to kind of use and like I said, it uses AI, so it does a really good job, and it gets. I think it gets better every year that I've I've been playing with it. Cool. Oh, um, thank you. Let's see downloads. Okay, let's see if this file opens. Let's see how messy my files are, guys. <laughs> also, if I put you on the spot with that question, just feel free to move on <laughs> oh no not at all i i want to show you guys things that you want to learn uh, and especially something like this i do every day it's like yeah i can show you kind of how i go about working with things so yay this is my crazy file but this is kind of gets to one of the points i was making about making sure we're using um artboards when we're working especially on digital imagery um like this is like digital banners so you I've created multiples of each one but the reason it's really easy is or like to create multiples is really great um, using artboards is you can just quickly click and then option drag something and you'll have another artboard where you can start messing around and doing something similar but let's say I wanted it at that size like I can just adjust the size really quickly on the fly and you can do that sort of thing over here but let's say I'm working with like an image here which is an ad I made for this, this um, 
restoration brand. Um, what I've done here is really messy. It's really messy, quite messy. But you'll see like, look at all these different layers that I work with. Um, what I like to do is start to label them with different colors, which is super important. Um, you could just do that quickly with like red. Um, if you have a bunch of them selected, you just right click and you'll get to that same menu that you were rasterizing images in and you can kind of hit like yellow and stuff like that. So it's a good way to kind of keep things organized, but you can see like you can kind of create a whole bunch of fun stuff in it. And I've used a few of the tools that we've kind of gone over today. So I've created a clipping mask over an image to control like what part of the image is being seen. But like I said, if I wanted to move so you could see, you know, let's say the client gets back to me and they're like, no, I want to see more of the shelving that's going on in this picture. Well, it's not deleted. Um, I've used the mask, so I unlink it there and then I can quickly kind of show more of the map or more of what the client requested, um, which is really cool. Um, another thing that I like to do is like, like I've said, I turn the background color instead of filling it with like a, a the paint bucket or something like that, I've created a shape. And the reason I've done that is because I can, like I said earlier, quickly just go in and then change the color if I needed to, um, which is awesome. Um, and you can do a, bu a bunch of things with the rectangles. Like these are just rectangles here that I've created lines. Um, if I wanted to, I mean, I brought in different PNGs here. Um, this is also a rectangle and you can round rectangles and turn them into buttons by just going down here to these options. And you can see right now it's set at 37, but if I were to set it at zero, it's become a rectangle. So it's really, really cool tool. Um, it's really versatile. I use it all the time and everything. And then let's see. Oh, that's why. Okay. This is, I don't have this typeface on my computer. That's why we're getting those. So anytime you get something like that, you're opening up a file that um, you don't have the typeface for. I have it on my work computer and not this computer. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm trying to think of like workflow process things I can kind of show you about this. Um, but a lot of it has to do with just like sort of just design principles of like laying out things based off of hierarchy. The most important thing for this client is, is this. So I want to make sure that this is the biggest thing on the page. And then I kind of coordinate, like um, create different quadrants that um, kind of draw your eye to different places. This is also, you know, trying to capture a feeling. Yeah. But that's more into graphic design principles and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, Damien, thank you so much. This has been really interesting to, I mean, I, I never would have thought of laying out a file with that many boards on it. Um, yeah. <laughs> But I totally yeah. understand why now that you've kind of gone through. Um, yeah, I guess cool. I, I had one more question, but I, I lost it. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. If you remember, just shout it out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. One last tool I wanted to go over with you all is, or actually there's a couple, there's two, and we're going to get through them quickly, I promise, um, is, Another really great one, it's called the, the mask tool. And let's make sure it's here. It's the stamp tool. Um, so it works in a similar way as the uh, sort of the spot healing brush does. Um, so what you have to do is select a source again. So after we've gone there, just option, click, and you'll see your paintbrush is loaded. You can change the size of it by hitting those brackets. Remember bracket to the right is bigger, bracket to the left is smaller. And bam, click and you're selecting from the same spot every time and you're creating a stamp. So this one, you can start to see like, now I could just paint orange everywhere if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, that's that's a great tool for hiding, hiding things as well. Um, it's really great for just creating different things. Um, but this one is also really fun to use. If you have a pattern loaded in here, which Photoshop comes preloaded with some of these, I just have like trees selected here. Um, and I wanted to quickly bring in a pattern. Um, just make sure it's selected and you'll see that it's being painted in. 
it's being stamped in. Um, it's being stamped in on that layer there. So we wanna actually add a layer, do that there, and we can start to do that. So that's one way to kind of sort of like bring in um, different background sort of elements and stuff like that. And we can turn this whole scene into like a little more of a natural looking thing. Like we're looking at a, a wall of oranges on a grove or something strange like that, even though oranges don't don't grow on walls. So yeah, that's uh, that's the, the clone stamp tool. And you can use that in a separate layer, just like we did before. Um, just make sure that you have this area here selected and make sure it says current and below. If it just says current layer, it's only gonna select from that layer there. So you wanna make sure that you have current and below, especially if you're in your new layer, which we are, because we're working on destructively. And you can start to draw again. And then you can turn it off, see what your image looked like before, after, before. It's super helpful. Um, another quick little healing thing. Um, and then one more that I wanted to go through was the burn tool. Uh, this one works in tandem with uh, the dodge tool. So um, when we're going through those, basically it's using old, um, old photography. So like analog photography techniques. I think that these tools are actually designed after how those, those techniques were done. To dodge um, is to actually um, brighten it. So what um, old, um, I say old, but it was not even that long ago. If you were developing film, um, you would actually burnish it with like this round little tool to kind of rub it away a little bit. And then that would make it lighter. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of why Photoshop has adopted those those looks there, but what you want to do is select the layer there and we'll have it layered. And you can start to see that when you start drawing with this brush, it starts brightening up those pixels quite a bit. Like this is like super bright. Um, and that's because we have the exposure set at 50%. That's really bright. Um, we want to do something a little more subtle. So we'll go with something like 20%. Just kind of brighten that up a little bit. There we go. That's a nice bright orange. Um, but let's say we want to darken it. Um, you could go back over here to the burn tool and the burn tools does exactly kind of what it says. It, it sort of burns the pixels away. And once you start drawing, you're darkening those spots up again. This is a really great way to kind of um, add definition to areas. Um, you can contour faces this way. Again, you can like shade shapes, um, shade shade oranges, <laughs> um, all sorts of things like that. But um, a quick way to kind of work back and forth um, within these is just, let's say you have um, the dodge tool selected and you're drawing, you're drawing, you're drawing. Uh, I'm brightened it too much. If you hit the option or if you hit, which one is it? Option, yeah, option key. It'll, it'll bring up the alternate tool. So now you're using um, the burn tool. So dodge, burn. Um, those are really great tools to just quickly manipulate photos. Um, I like to use, those are generally the ones that I use all the time, especially when photo editing. Um, but yeah, I think that's like a majority of the tools that I wanted to get through. Did that make sense, the dodge and burn? Definitely, thank you. Okay, good. I have a question, Damien. I'm, I'm used to using Lightroom. Um, yeah. There's something called the, um, what is it? The spot notes. It's the adjustment brush. So you can basically sort of like paint on hue and saturation into specific areas or- yeah. Um, smooth people's faces, that sort of thing. Is there something equivalent in Photoshop? Um, so the only way to kind of do something like that, um, at least that I would, how I would work, I'm not sure if there is an easier way around it, would be to use the adjustment tools and it'll create um, a layer for you and it automatically creates a mask. So let's say we did want to do something like that. Um, Oh, that's showing up because we have a layer there. 
if you did want to just kind of manipulate just with your brush, um, we can do what we were doing earlier by selecting and masking and then creating creating an adjustment layer, or you can just kind of adjust the entire layer like this, go over to your paintbrush, which is the B tool. And if you were to draw right now, if you look, my preset is loaded, my brush is loaded to white, nothing's gonna happen. But if I were to do um, hit X to alternate between that, now my brush is loaded with black. Let's make this a little bigger so it's a little bit more dramatic of a change. Um, you can start to see that's a, an easy way to kind of start adjusting on the fly, sort of like an adjustment brush. Um, you're just creating different mass area. So now it looks like this is like a glowing orange in the middle of purple fruit. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I would go about doing something like that um, is just manipulate the entire image first and then work backwards sort of a thing or else um, select a part of the image that you want and then create the mask. And then from there, you can kind of, you can edit the mask. If, does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Thank you. Okay, good, good. Cool. Yeah, any other questions? This has really been great, Damien. Thank you so much, man. Okay, good, good. I'm glad you guys learned some stuff from me. <laughs>